And we are nine. We're gonna be in a It's Okay, magandang hapon po. Kahit na medyo maraming mga So, okay, let us continue to like, share, and subscribe, of course, our uh, Expro page. Okay, magandang hapon po sa inyong itabinarang sa Studio Pro, which is so, sa mga avid viewers and one of our networks po. Magandang hapon mag so, very interesting ang topic natin today, actually, and very timely. And ang mga kasama po natin for this episode is hindi siya stranger sa atin. In fact, isa to sa mga uh, batikan, not veterano, kasi very, ano, ito ang um, pambato, sabi nga ni Sir Oka, ni PC Oka, ang pambato ng Palo Alto Networks. Uh, second to him, <laughs> pagdating sa kag uh, kagwapuhan at kagkaringan in terms of cybersecurity, natawa si Sir. <laughs> so, uh, mamaya, mananaman natin kung ano topic ni Sir at kung bakit natin siya makakasama for today. So, talakag, MDRRM mo, good afternoon po, isa magandang hapon sa inyo. And of course, Sir Randall, as always, magandang hapon po. Continue to like, share, subscribe our page for to learn more about uh, cybersecurity and what we do as an organization here at Expo. So, I need to know ating chairman. So, okay. Okay, bago ko, bago ko ipakilala sa sir. Sir, kamusta ka na po? <laughs> bago ko. Kamusta po? Yung mga estudyante niyo, sir, almost hired na lahat. Oo nga, na-mention na nakakuha na sila ng mga trabaho na fix po scholars, right? Yes, one of uh, ang ating mga uh, certified cybersecurity professionals na isa sa mga produkto niyo po. Uh, coming from Palo Alto. Actually, yung ano nga po sa kanila, I think uh, 11 will be here in Manila coming October. So, siguro po we would arrange a um, meeting po para ma-meet nyo rin sila personally with the mentors po para makita naman natin kung ano na yung naging pagbabago. Yes po. Isa-set namin yan. Good afternoon, mga kapex po. Salamat po. Have a safe ride home. Advento. Ay, sir, ikaw daw to. Shout out daw. Marlon Advento. Shout, shout out naman, Nico. <laughs> Ang daming fans si Sir Nico. <laughs> Ang daming fans. So, continue po to like and share. Hello, Capex Pro. Hello po, uh, Enet. Sa magandang hapon sa inyo. Hello, Mr. Chair. Good afternoon po. Hi, Sir Angel. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Hey, sir. Hello. We'll fix lang my uh, background. Yes, sir. Mr. Anan Pakulan, Press Anan. Good afternoon, mga Facebook from Bacolod. So, isang magandang hapon po. Uh, like I was saying po kanina, our students from Bacolod would be coming here in Manila this October. Hopefully po maka pag creating po tayo ng meet and greet together with their mentors. And of course, we are busy po din po with Sino? Sino Sir Chair. Yung mga ano natin, Sir, graduates natin sa Pixpo CCSPP, most of them will come aboard October, uh, first week of October po. And they signify their intention to, uh, to do a courtesy call po sa inyo at sa mga mentors din po nila. So, kung po nito can set up as well. Yes po. Sure, sure. And kung makasama rin po sila sa CISO Cup, the better for them. Pwede rin po, Anda. Good afternoon, mga Cupex, bro. Magandang hapon po. And hopefully, you are all safe and sound. 
kung nasaan man po kayo. Kung nasaan po kayo ngayon, kaya hindi nyo indicate uh, your location po para mabati naman po namin kayo. Hello po, Idol, Chair, Angel, Bam, Enet. Hindi lang pala si Sir Nico, maraming fans. Pati rin pala oh. si Mr. Chair. Hello daw po. Hindi lang hapon po sa lahat. So while we are growing our audience, continue to like, share, and follow po our page. And for more news and updates about cybersecurity and our efforts here in Facebook, continue po uh, to tune in not only in question of cybersecurity, but also to our report of the Institute of Cybersecurity Professionals. Uh, so Mr. Chair, kamusta naman kong link ko nyo? Nabasa nyo ba yung... Uh, yes, balita po. na lumabas na mga Chinese hackers are uh, hiding. Uh, no? Yes po. Hardware ng ginagamit nila. Cisco nila. routers. No. Very uh, ano no, May mga yes. Cisco routers na compromise na pala. So kung may Cisco routers kayo, mayroong nirelease ang uh, CISA ng US and FBI na makikita nyo doon kung paano nyo ma, ma address no pero kung mayroon kayong security operation center pwede kayong mag-create ng kasi most mostly connect connect to command and control ito eh. so yung router nyo is uh, connecting to a command and control kung totoo man ito so would be good to fire up your security operation center send all the logs connection logs mga tacaps no and create a use case so usually normally yung mga router natin hindi naman ito ginagamit to create a logical connection going anywhere no unless ginagamit mo yon pag ginagamit mo yon tigil mo na yon no? So, yun. Para makita mo, pag nag-connect yung router mo, makikita mo kaagad na ito malicious. Outside of normal behavior ito. So, yun. Uh, ano pang mga balita? At yung PhilHealth natin. Yes. Okay. Okay. Very Kawai great. Dyan, great. Lahat ng mga data natin nandun sa PhilHealth. No? So, yun. Medyo malala ang uh, sitwasyon. Ano yan, ano yan. <laughs> Wake up call sa atin yan, Mr. Chair, that anyone can be a victim of cybersecurity crimes. And to think that uh, everyone has been held uh, an accounts. Actually, kasi tayo, hindi yan wake up call lang sa atin. Kasi uh, most of us na nandito, alam na natin yan. Wake up call yan sa government. Hindi na hindi nila pwedeng i-downplay na itong uh, threat sa ating Philippine cyberspace at threat sa ating uh, personal information natin, no? Eh seryosohin nila 'yan. Eh yung mga health data yata is not just a PII, it's a sensitive uh, personal information, yes, so. di ba? Tapos ganun lang, ganun Marami. lang. Atakehin. Parang Parang may mali yata. Actually, ano po? Uh, itong topic for today natin, Mr. Chair, I think would be beneficial. Uh, I I think this uh, engineer Nico here can shed some light on how our modern technology could be uh, could help us in case there are issues like this. Tiba po, Sir Nico. may nag-e-eco yata, Arlene? May nag e ba sa side? I think it's my... Uh, the side ko po sa siguro, Mr. Chair. Medyo unstable yung aking head. Meron kang ibang gadget? Uh, i-try ko, Mr. Chair. Hey, I mean, Kasi I mean, ngayon, may nakabukas ka na iba? Opo, oh, may isa po. <laughs> hey, ipang monitoring natin. I-mute ko na lang. Sige, no, huwag kong i-mute. Yung speaker nun, yung volume niya, ibaba mo. Sige po. Baka yun nga po. Kasi naririnig namin yung... <laughs> Meet back on Mr. Chair. Sige po. Mayroon so, tayong viewers sa uh, Cebu. Uh, yun nga po eh, nakakatuwa. Harating tayo hanggang Cebu. 
Si Mr. Anjo. Uh, this will be, uh, sabi niya, good afternoon, ma'am and sir, watching from Cebu City. This will be shared by my students in Cybercrime Investigation Course at University of Cebu, Pardo, and Talisay. Ah, may yung hapon na mo diyan, bay. Okay. I'm glad. Ikaw, taga University of Cebu, ako taga CIT University. Yeah, mambaling man, ma'am. Medyo <clears throat> dolar na takip, pardo man Sige, may pamista diya sa Pardo sa una. Okay, si Tebo. Ako pala, no? Present now. <laughs> Bisaya. Oh, good afternoon. Tinga Sandila. Oh, Bisaya. Mga Kapix Pro, si Herald. Good afternoon. Si Joel. Good afternoon, bro. Si Mac natin. Bombo Radio. Uh, si Joan Cacho. <laughs> may taga-crammy pa nga po. <laughs> Si, oh, si Johan, uh, matagal na natin kakilala ito. Ang hapon sa edan. Oh, kani kusgan kayo niyo. Wendell, Mr. Wendell Palalon. Mayang hapon ba? Hi, Sir Wendell. Hmm. Yes. Isa sa mga avid viewer and, uh, viewers and one of our technology partners in the ENS workshop. Mr. Hi. Frederick Gonda. Oh. Ito so, Mr. Chair, uh, since dalawa na kayong guwapong award dito. <laughs> Shall we start okay. po with okay. our ano, topic for today? Yes. Introduce mo na yung Sir. ano natin. Yes. Okay. For our topic for today, which is artificial intelligence and its role in the modern day uh, SOC, we are fortunate to have one of the experts and one of the, uh, sa atin ay beauty and brains, ito ay ang handsome na pambato ng Palo Alto Networks next to BC Oka. <laughs> okay, to discuss at this topic. Parang so, kamukha ni Vice Chair ito. <laughs> yes, yes po. Ano, uh, busy lang si Vice Chair, pero ito rin po yung closest <laughs> nagot ko kay Vice Chair after this. So, without much further further ado, let us all welcome of course one of the mentors of the Prince Rosie's SPD and of course the resident expert from Palo Alto Networks, Engineer John Nicono Monica. Hi sir, magandang hap Hi, good afternoon, good afternoon. Yeah, so yeah, uh, just to discuss, uh, introduce myself, I'm John Nicolomonica, I'm one of the assistant engineer from Palo Alto Networks. Uh, prior joining Palo Alto Networks, uh, I work in one of the uh, global managed security services company here in the Philippines, and uh, we're handling, basically, we're, we're basically handling the security operations of one of the telcos in the U.S., no? So that, that is my background and more into uh, my, my topic for today is uh, how, uh, first of all, we'll be, we will be discussing more into the challenges right now in the security operations and uh, how how we have overcome this with Palo Alto Networks using, of course, uh, AA and automation uh, embedded into the security operations, right? Okay, uh, Ms. Arlene, are we good to start? Yes, sponsor. All right. Let me just share my screen. All right. Uh, and uh, good afternoon again, Sir Angel, no, and uh, the, the rest of the Pixel team, as well as the audience. No. So, so uh, as mentioned, we will be discussing on uh, the Palo Alto's approach on how we do it internally within our security operations. Now, how we have transformed our security operations. Now, uh, building in building an autonomous security operations. So, when we talk about security operations right now, and the reality behind security operations is that it's really complex and there's a lot of challenges within the SOC. Uh, one of which is there are too many tools in the SOC right now. You have the EPP, you have the EDR, you have the NPA, you have the firewall, SIM, SOAR, and uh, a lot of which are these tools that you have in the security operations right now doesn't really talk to each other, nor these tools integrate with each other. And another challenge in the security operations right now is there are too many alerts that is being managed by the security operations analysts. Uh, based on forestal wave data, that uh, the, 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 the average alerts that a security operations is handling daily is 11,000. So a lot of which are low fidelity alerts, meaning it doesn't really provide any value, and a lot of which are false positives. Of course, 
Uh, with the number of alerts coming in, there are also the time that we spend investigating one of each and every alerts in the SOC right now. And a lot of the SOC right now are very lean. Uh, they, they, they can't accommodate uh, the number of alerts, the, the, the incidents that, that, that are present in the security operations right now. Of course, nandiyan din yung mga repetitive tasks that is being done by the security operations analysts. Some of which are examples are when they extract yung mga IOCs in the incident. They try to enrich it through a third-party threat intelligence sources. Uh, these are some of the samples that they have done manually, which are some of the challenges that they are facing. This results to a high mean time to detect and a high mean time to respond. Right. So just to just to provide a general knowledge of what is uh, the MTTD and what is MTTR, this is usually the KPIs of a security operation center, and uh, this is how they calculate you know, their 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 effectiveness uh, in dealing and, and, and combating different threats in their environment. So a mean time to detect is the average time it takes for an analyst to be able to understand or to, to be able to identify that there is a certain incident or threat in their environment. And a mean time to respond is the average time it takes for a security analyst to be able to resolve that certain incident containing, eradicate it, and close the ticket. Right? So the challenge right now and the real problem why most of the organizations are having a high mean time to detect and the mean time to respond is because they have the information, they have the data, but the data is in too many places. And what do we mean by that is the network data is in the NTA, the endpoint data is in the EDR, some of the data is in the SIM, and some of the uh, alerts coming from different sources are also in the SIM. Identity data is somewhere else in the cloud operations right now. Some of our customers are saying that their current cloud operations right now are currently disconnected in their security operations, right? So if you are a security analyst and you are receiving thousands of alerts daily and you don't have enough context to fully investigate a certain incident in a single dashboard, then you, hope you, then you have to go back into the different source systems, you know, go into the firewall, log in, look into the data, look, it, look into the traffic logs, go into the endpoint, log in, look into the data on the endpoint, look into the different processes, the hashes, the registries, and manually correlate the data that you have on your endpoint, network, identity, and the different tools that you have on your environment. And that is the challenge right now. Truthfully, we, we see the result when this is being done in the security operations. Based on forestal wave data as well, the average time it takes for a security analyst to close a critical or high incident is four days. And the attacker's dwell time in the security operations or in the environment of the customers are 212 days. So this is the current broken situation on where we are right now. So Palo Alto did a transformation on the approach of our internal security operations. So what we did is we transitioned from an analyst-centric security operations to an analyst-assisted security operations, letting the machine lead with human empowered, right? So what do we mean by this is, what we do is we ingest the logs coming from the different data, the different sources that we have on our environment, the network data, the endpoint data, the identity, the cloud, the attack surface management, third-party data that are not Palo Alto networks as well, and also data from the applications from different servers into a single platform. Now, what we do with the data, with the data that we've ingested is we stitch those logs coming from different sources to form an attack story for our customers. So once we've had that one big coherent data, we apply an analytics AI ML into that data to identify high critical and high fidelity alerts in our environment. Once we've identified the critical incidents in our environment, then we apply the automation part in doing the investigation and doing the, the response actions into uh, the security creations that we have in our soft. So, the mindset that we have with Palo Alto Networks is we are transitioning from, as mentioned before, an analyst-centric security operation to an analyst-assisted security operations. 
So right now, the, 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 the front end of the process in the SOC is more into the analyst. So 90% of the time of the analyst is they just do security monitoring. Mostly these are, as mentioned, low fidelity alerts and doesn't really make much value into the security operations right now. Analytics and AI is only applied to a very, very small part of the data that you have in the SOC. And automation is only applied in a very small process in the security operations right now. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to invert that pyramid rather than having the analyst do all the manual tasks, the repetitive tasks. We have built in an automation first approach in our security operations. We have built in automation in doing investigation and doing responses into the actions that is being done by the current security operations analyst. And we've applied AI and ML analytics into all of the data that we have in our environment. So what happens now is the analysts, the analysts feed up their time uh, and, and focus on what's really critical. Uh, they are there, the analysts are there to make those hard decisions, to look into the data that doesn't really make sense. So in this slide, this is the current technology, the actual technology stack that we are using within the Palo Alto Networks company. So I'm gonna be quickly walking you through in every part of this slide, starting on the bottom row. So as mentioned that we have the different sensors and the different enforcement points in our network environment or in, in the Palo Alto Networks environment. So from the network side, of course, we have our Palo Alto Next Generation Firewall. Uh, we have the VM series, the containerized version that protects our network. We leveraging app ID, user ID, threat prevention, wildfire for sandboxing, and others capability on built in on, into the firewall. Of course, we also have the Prisma Access, which basically our ZTNA solution that secures our remote workforce, including us, of course, we use Prisma Access. We also have third-party tools that we use in our environment. One is Proofpoint, uh, which is our email security. We have the Tenable for uh, the vulnerability management. Also, we have the Okta for our MFA solution. On the endpoint side, of course, we use our own Cortex-XDR uh, with a lot of different functionalities from behavioral threat protection, ransomware prevention, anti-malware, anti-exploit, anti etc. Then on the cloud side, we are using our own SaaS security API that secures SaaS applications. We also have our Prisma Cloud that secures the entire stack, the entire stack on the cloud from containerized uh, VMs, uh, serverless functions, and as well as the configurations that we have on the cloud. So what happens now is with all the data coming from the different sources from the network and, and the endpoint and to the cloud, We've ingested that into a single platform, which we call Cortex XIM. So Cortex XIM is really the heart of our security operations. And for those who haven't heard about the Cortex XIM, so it stands for Extended Security Intelligence Automation Management. So this is our approach into providing an, an automation first security operations, right? Also, just to share, you know, uh, Recently, we have moved from a third-party scene to our own XIM. So we have completely eradicated our third-party scene and moved into our own platform, which is the Cortex XIM, right? So the Cortex XIM, once it ingested all the logs coming from the different sources, it applied the machine learning, the analytics to identify the critical incidents, the high fidelity alerts in our environment, then it is being passed to our Cortex XOR, which does the automation workflow in investigating these different incidents that we have in our environment, doing the response actions, whether these are blocking IPs, killing the malicious, uh, killing the processes, blocking the hash, and so on and so forth. The Cortex XOR is also built in inside our Cortex XIM. And with the Cortex XOR, of course, it's it's in it's integrated with. Uh, the different threat intelligence platforms that we use, including our own Unit 42, the Virus Tota, Spam House, Web Tracker, and a lot more threat intelligence that we have. On the latter part of the slide, you could also see our own attack surface management that is high, tightly integrated with the XOR to do an attack surface to, to, to check you know, the, the threat actors view, the, the threat actors view into our own environment. And of course, lastly, the Cortex XOR is integrated with the pager duty to 
notify our CPT analysts if there are any critical incident that needs to be responded to, right? So I don't want to talk about no more into the products, uh, but I would just like to quickly discuss on how we design uh, the concept around the cortex exam. And later on, no, uh, we'll show you on how what, what is the result in terms of when we apply this approach into our own speed integrations at Palo Alto Networks? So the cortex exam is designed in three concepts. Now, one is through the analytics intelligent data. So as mentioned, what we do here is we ingest those logs coming from a lot of third-party sources, our own technology tools, stitch those data together. Now we have this one big to billion data where we apply analytics and AI against. So with those data, of course, we could do now baselining, identify the unusual behavior in our environment, and as well as identifying anomalies in our environment. Okay, second is we do automation first approach. And what do we mean by automation is there are two parts of automation. One is the human workflow automation, and this is being done by the sort right now. Automating you know, what a human analyst does in a certain security alert. Maybe uh, uh, enriching the data, isolating the device, blocking the IP on the firewall. These are some examples of a human workflow automation. But the second part of automation in the platform is what we call native automation, which is embedded into the product itself. And what it does is when we, when, when we ingest those data coming from different platform, we normalize the data and stitch those data together to create one big attack story. So if you are a security analyst, you don't have to go to the different source systems. You, you just have this one big data in a single platform and you all and, and you have that context for you to be able to investigate the incident properly. Right. So when we combine these two automation in the platform, right, uh, we're able to recommend new playbooks to we were able to recommend new playbooks you know, based on machine learning uh, on every specific alerts and incidents that we have in our environment. So for example, if you encounter this critical incident, the platform itself recommends what automation workflow you could use for you to be able to investigate and resolve that specific incident. Of course, lastly, the platform is built using proactive security, meaning the platform is tightly integrated with our at own attack surface management where it constantly analyzes the attack surface from the outside to the inside of uh, the, the, the company's environment and for us to be able to shrink that attack surface. So the question is, what is the outcome when we have applied this own approach into our own security operations today? So just to share our own internal security operations within Palo Alto Networks, Scope is only to protect, of course, the internal systems that we have in our environment. Some of the services that we provide are threat monitoring, threat hunting, incident response, and the rough scope that our security operations manages or secures is around 15,000 employees, 400,000 servers and VMs, uh, 15,000 laptops, of course, 15 data centers, and of course, the security services, uh, that is being consumed by 85,000 of our customers. So pag titignan niyo, no, sobrang laki ng scope ng security operations namin. And you would think that our security operations is very big. Uh, we have a very, very big team. But in reality, no, our, our security operations is very lean. And I'll show you the details later on. So we have this... We have, we have this link where in you can look into the actual physical security operations of Palo Alto Networks. So if you want to learn more about how we do the operations specifically on the SOC, what are the playbooks that we have in the SOC, uh, what is our shifting, how do we operate, you could open the link here. Uh, actually, it's, it's public facing, so you could just look at it and you'll be able to see our own physical security operations and how do we operate uh, live. Right. So going back into our own security operations, this is the daily log ingestion and alert volumes internally in our security operations. We are ingesting around 36 billion of events daily in our SOC. And out of the box, if we turn on all of the capabilities in our platform, on our firewalls, on our uh, EDRs, on our cloud security, 
it will generate approximately around 11 million alerts. So imagine if you are a legacy security operations and you are dealing with 11 million alerts, regardless of how big your SOC is, regardless of what technology you use, it's really hard to manage those 11 million of alerts. But what we do within Palo Alto Networks is we've applied machine learning here. We're able to do grouping, exclusions, the grouping, and we're able to bring that 11 million alerts down to 133 alerts. Now, from that 133 alerts, we've applied automation. Around 15% of that alerts, we've, we've applied full automation. What do we mean by this is from the time that we open the ticket, the investigation part of the alert and the incident, the response actions, whether we block the IP, whatever actions we do, it's being done automatically, automatically end to end. So it's tagged as something our security analysts have done, but in reality, no, hindi pa namin talaga siya inahawakan. The rest of the tickets are partially automated, meaning it's either the investigation or, or was started by our own security analyst, then at some point, no, we run an automation to to, to fully investigate the ticket, to provide the response, the response action, then close the ticket. Or it's the other way around where the automation starts the investigation, then hands it off to one of our security analysts to fully close the ticket. So out of these 133 alerts, 5% are converted into incidents. So incidents where our security analyst needs to remediate or contain or respond to for any necessary actions. But of course, with the proactive approach that we've done, uh, the prevention person or the automation that we've built in into our security operations, we haven't encountered a major incident with any financial or regulatory impact. So what I wanted to highlight in this slide is our current mean time to detect, which is 10 seconds, and our current mean time to respond is one minute. So we have drastically bring down our own mean time to detect and our own mean time to respond by applying AI and as well as automation first in our school operations. So in total, now we're able to save around 20 FTEs per annum for our security analysts. So as discussed earlier, no, if you look at if you look into our current security operations, tipig naman talaga na napakalaki ng security operations namin. And it's because of the scope that we are currently managing. As mentioned, the 15,000 laptops, 400,000 servers and VMs, and 13 data centers. We really think na sobrang laki ng security operations namin. But in reality, we are only 22 total personnel within our own SOC environment. 10 of which is our security analyst. These are focusing on doing the traditional SOC, uh, responding to alerts, doing incident response, doing threat hunting. And the rest of the seven engineers that we have in our own security operations are, these are the supporting roles, making sure that we have the right automation in place. We ingest all the logs coming from the different sources, making sure that we have the right support for that 10 security operations analyst. So if you're going to be comparing yung SOC built namin kum, uh, to the same size of Palo Alto Networks on a different enterprise, clearly kasi twice as big as what we have right now, yung makita nyo security operations. But yeah, as mentioned, since we're doing the automation first, we're, we're letting the machine lead the SOC, uh, we're able to drastically bring down yung total personnel between our security operation center. So at a high level, this is how we've transformed our own security operations away to the legacy security operations challenges. And this is what we call the new math formula. This is how we've done it into our own security operations. So the first part of the formula is the prevention focused mindset. This is where our tools, uh, this is where we leverage our tools not to block yung mga the, the, the earlier stages of the uh, cyber attack lifecycle, we have our strata for blocking the network-based threats. We have our cortex for blocking endpoint-based threats. And of course, we have the prisma for blocking the cloud-based threats. The second part of the formula is, of course, the cortex exam, where we ingest two slugs coming from the different sources into a single platform, where we apply, of course, the uh, AI, stitch those slugs together, form an attack story, 
and which actually brings down no yung, yung investigation time of the analyst because they don't have to go into the different tools in their environment to just for them to investigate. And the last part of of course the uh the, the, the formula is the cortex XOR, which we automate nga, as mentioned, yung mga investigation processes, the response actions, the workflows that is being done, and the repetitive tasks that is being done by the security analyst. The question is, what is the result of this into our own security operations? One, we're able to bring down yung alerts uh, from 100 million to 150 alerts. And this is because of the AI that is built in into the platform. We don't build the correlation rules manually, comparing to, of course, the legacy scene where you have to build the queries, you have, you have to build the correlation rules manually. This is already being done by the AI itself. It, it identifies you know, what is critical in our environment and what needs to be investigated in our own environment. Of course, when we've done the prevention-focused mindset, uh, our security operations were able to shift right. And what do we mean by shift right is focusing on the latter part of the cyber attack life cycle. And I'll be discussing that in the next slide. Right? And since we're able to free up the time of the security analyst through the automation that we are building, they were able to change their focus, their time into a 30-30-30 model. So the first 30% of their time is they focus on uh, responding to critical alerts, critical incidents in our environment. The second 30% of their time is they focus on doing proactive threat hunting, which is very, very important. Uh, looking for malicious uh, behaviors inside our corporate infrastructure, our corporate environment, and responding to those uh, identified threats. And of course, the last 30% is, is to do alert improvement within our security operations. And also, just to share, we are not built into a tiered security operations model. We don't have layer one, tier one SOC. No, and, and the reason behind it is because the tier one or the layer one SOC usually is the one doing the triaging of the different incidents in our environment. This is being done by the automation, the, the XOR that is built into our SOC platform. And of course, lastly, the greatest benefit that we have is whether we are is we are a very very lean shop, but we are able to operate like 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 a like a large shop. So this is what we mean by security analysts focusing on the right part of the cyber attack life cycle. So we know now the importance of the security analyst, and we don't we, and we are not saying that we are fully removing the security analyst in the security operations right now. We see their importance in the SOC, and that's why we want them to focus on what's really important, which is doing the proactive threat hunting, alert improvement, uh, handling the critical alerts. So we don't need people looking into the port scans on our public-facing server. We have the tools for that. We don't need, we, we rely on technology and preventing delivery of the malware, exploitation of the vulnerabilities in our environment, and even installation of fruit kits and rats, these are being prevented by technology. This is where the value of the technology is, right? Yes, the firewall blocks C2 connections, but we need people looking into these types of alerts because you are already potentially compromised. We need people looking into alerts aligned to lateral movement. For example, RDP sessions, SSH sessions coming from a DMZ server, because this is where the attacker is already inside your network. And we also need analysts to focus on actions on the objectives, because the threat actor is very near you know, in terms of stealing your crown jewels, your source codes, your data, your passwords. So this is our approach right now into the security operations. So just to share, no, uh, I, I know that this is not specific for a security incident, but this is a sample of a legacy approach in the software or in part of the security team where uh, it's very manual. Uh, one example is yung vulnerability management where yung mga, yung mga security teams manually scans the environment create a ticket, assign it into the asset owner. The asset owner uh, patch the vulnerability, then we scan again to validate the, uh, the, the vulnerability. It was already resolved. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of manual process. And of course, undamming repetitive actions since you have to do it bi-weekly, bi-monthly. 
on your environment. And this is an example of moving away from that approach to an autonomous security operations. We're able to automate most of the security operations processes. And we're also able to automate the response and the investigation process on handling a certain alerts and incidents into the SOC. So just to share now, this is the same platform that we are using to power uh, the anti-child pornography platform of Smart. So we have built an automated way to block those uh, uh, child, uh, child pornography contents through the same automation, the same platform that we are using in our own security operations. So just to just just some key takeaways before I end my presentation. Uh, one is AI and ML has a lot of benefits in hand in the security operations itself. One, it could identify the critical incidents rather than you creating and manually correlating the rules, uh, building the queries to generate alerts. You have the AI that could identify high fidelity alerts in your environment. Second is we're able to bring down the mean time to detect and the mean time to respond by automating a lot of aspects into our security operations, whether these are the human workflows, the repetitive tasks, or doing the response actions or investigations of the incidents, right? We're able to increase the security operations productivity since, since we, when we remove those repetitive tasks from the security analyst, they could now focus on what's really important. Threat hunting, improvement of the alerts, responding to the critical incidents, and a lot more. And of course, lastly, we reduce the operational complexity since we're already consolidating the different platform, the, the, the different tools in the security creations into a single platform, right? The EDR, the SIEM, the XOR, the attack surface management into a single tool, single platform. So that is our that, that is our key takeaways, and that is how we do it in our own security operations within Palo Alto Networks. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Nico. Very comprehensive and very malaman yung inyong uh, topic about AI. So, sir, before we entertain, of course, question coming from our audience, ito kasi yung madalas na tanong ng ano natin, eh, especially with the generation that we have right now, and we cannot go away with AI and MLM. Will there come a time na tayong mga talents, tayong mga professional, uh, ang AI is either a threat or an asset to us. So will there come a time ba na tayo ay papalitan na ng AI? Or uh, AI is instrumental pa rin po? So ano-ano po ba ang goals and pains ng AI sa atin? So I, I think no, right now, uh, AI is being leveraged by the threat actors as well. And we're also leveraging the AI itself into our own speed equations processes. Now, as mentioned, we're, we're, we're not seeing that AI will possibly in the future, but right now we're not seeing AI to fully replace the analyst in the SOC because the analyst brings a lot of value in the security operations. There are a lot of uh, critical incidents that can't be managed by AI right now and we leverage on the analyst right now to focus on those critical incidents, right? So uh, I don't see that right now it will be able to fully replace the security analyst in our security operations right now. Well, I think one thing is uh, very clear. No, AIs cannot function without human yes. intervention. So it's just a question of uh, whether your AI is a friend or a foe. Right? I said the good guys will create a good AI. Bad guys, they also have their bad AIs. But what we have seen today is that the bad AIs are getting more sophisticated faster than the good AIs. And that's why I always throw this uh, challenging question to everyone. Are we getting better? Because uh, wherever, I, wherever I look, uh, whatever articles I I read, the the bad guys are always ahead of us or have been ahead of us since time immemorial. So it's good to have 
Palo Alto developed this uh, uh, AI, I mean, capability with uh, uh, that is AI driven. Yep. Right? Uh, but I'm, I'm, I have to say this that Palo Alto alone cannot save the world from cyber attacks or cyber threats. So what about the others? Right? We, I don't think all of us are using Palo Alto. And I don't think many of us can afford Palo Alto. See? That's the, that's the problem. There's always a problem of affordability. Yung bang mga micro, small, and medium enterprises can afford Palo Alto? Question is, Kaya bang kaya ba ni Palo Alto to cater? Kasi it's all about profit. You can't afford me. I'm not selling to you. Diba? And it's not just Palo Alto. Someone has to create something that's innovative enough, sophisticated enough, and affordable to the community. So, meron ba tayong mga questions dito? Nawala na si Arlene. Sinulan niya ata sa kanila. Okay, si Mr. Darwin Tejerero. Meron siyang uh, tanong dito. Is using artificial intelligence and machine learning in identifying security events and threats can the occurrence of false positives or low value instances alerts or alerts of detect in the of the in detecting security threats be hundred percent eliminated or at least minimized. So he's talking about uh mga false positives no or low value instances alerts. Ito mga ano to eh, mga waste of time to eh. Kapag marami kang false positives sa environment mo yep. or low level or low value instances of alerts na na detect sa oras ng mga tao mo na na gagastos sa sa walang kwentang ano so yun mawawala ba daw 100% eliminated ba daw yeah uh, yes sir angel actually i agree with you that this a lot takes a lot Ay, bago of... mo sagutin yan jan batiin ko muna yung ating past president and uh, currently uh, board member si past president uh, francisco ashley asidelio magandang hapon idol Happen okay game yeah. So, yeah, so yes, Ranger, no, I actually totally I totally agree, no. Uh in regards to your statement na this false positive takes a lot of time into our security creations. And right now, challenge most of the soft of a lot of enterprises, no, uh manages uh false positive. Most of their time do na overs yung 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 uh of course uh, the time that they are doing to investigate this false positive. Question is if AI can remove 100% the false positive or can reduce. Right now, we can only reduce the false positive, but we, right now, we within Palo Alto Networks, we're not saying that we have false positive. We, we do have. And what we're just trying to do is we were able to reduce those false positive by letting the AI identify uh, and understand our environment. So we feed our, we feed our AI with different data across our environment third-party systems, applications, uh, third-party technologies, and be able to come up with what's really important, what, what's really need to be investigated within our environment. So as mentioned, as discussed, we still have false positive and we cannot right now remove, totally remove that. We can, we can reduce it for the meantime. Okay. Uh, siguro in addition to that, kung gusto mong bumaba yung false positives mo, dapat gumawa ka ng maraming use cases. Kasi ito yung threat, threat correlation mo sa SOC mo is uh, dependent on your use cases. Now, para dumami yung use cases mo, dapat palakasin mo yung threat intelligence and threat hunting capabilities mo. Para madami kang may ingest ng mga IOCs, then you create use cases based on those IOCs. Then, yung correlation mo is factual, no? verified siya. Hindi yung kung ang ginagamit mo kasi, gumagamit ka ng SIEM tapos puro 
Pero in-enable mo lang yung mga mga nandun sa SIEM mo, eh talagang puro false positive aabutin mo. ba? Diba? So you also need to understand your own network, your own environment. For example, ang um, um, minomonitor mo pa ba yung brute force login? Eh kasi sa amin, di na kami minomonitor yun. Di na nangyayari yun eh. Diba? Minomonitor mo pa ba yung uh, uh, failed logins na madaming beses, eh kung makalimutin lang ng password talaga yung user mo, eh di false positive yun, di ba? Yan. So, gagawa ka ngayon ng mga use cases. Yan. Suggestion lang naman yan. So, si Palo Alto, mayroon pa siyang false positives. Si Tebo, may... Mas okay ba? Ah, ito pa pala si Darwin. Mayroon pa siya. Unahin mo na natin ito, bro, si Darwin. In migrating or implementing a fully automated SOC operations through ML and AI, would it be advisable to conduct an assessment of the current SOC, including the skills of SOC analysts to identify the best automated responsive solution? Yon ganda ng tanong ni Mr. Darwin. Oh, Barat, dyan. Yeah. Papasubo ka ngayon dito sa mga yes <laughs> natin. <laughs> So yeah, I think the, our answer to that or our, our take to that is one, uh, as mentioned, the AI or the automation platform that we bring into our <coughs> is two parts, the human automation workflow and the native embedded automation AI into the platform. So with the current automation and the AI that, that is built into the current platform that we have, we're able to recommend what is the critical incidents that needs to be that that needs to be investigated, and on top of this, we're also be able to recommend and the bayi mga that the AI itself can recommend. No, what are the automation actions that can be done? Whether uh, what type of investigation will be used? Uh, what 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 response actions block IPs, killing the process, etc. These are types of the AI that is being done into the current platform that we use right now. So yes, I think we also need to assess the current security operation before, of course, applying AI and ML, and of course, automation as well into the so, uh We need to identify what are the challenges, whether uh, is it because of the repetitive tasks in your environment that we can automate is it because of the high mean time to respond and high mean time to detect? And what is the reason behind that? So we're trying to identify first what is the current challenges. And from that, we're able to provide recommendations, whether what actions we could take and what can the ML do to help uh, you improve your current security creation process. Yeah. Okay. Mr. Chair, pwedeng pahabulan lang po ng tanong. I think this is actually uh, a follow-up question to what Sir Darwin Tejero uh, asked on the forum. So, Sir, you acknowledge the fact that there should be an assessment. But on our case, kasi the enemy is always one step ahead of us, di ba po, in the concept of cybersecurity. So, kung ganun yung thinking ng enemy and you have our AI, how often should you do the assessment to check and recheck the viability of our systems? So yeah, I think just to add on top of that, no, just to pass up the security analyst. Not I mentioned earlier that thirty percent of the time of the security analyst should focus on improving the security operation, alerts improvement. So the the security analyst skills is very is also very important, now to to be able to really improve the security operations detections, the correlation rules, the response actions. Because when you apply a response action is through an automated way. So you rin magagaling yung response action. What do you need to do? The machine will only automate what needs to be done by the security analyst. So it's very important na, uh, that the, the skills of the security analyst is very, very important, especially when building the, the right response actions through automating them. Very good points po actually, Mr. Chair. No? Kasi you do not only focus on the technology alone, you also improve the people behind the technology, which is our cybersecurity professionals. And also, of course, the appreciation of the organization. And so it really helps that Palo Alto is a firm believer on the, the technology and the people behind the technology. So kudos on that. Po. Very good point. Cybersecurity is... 
is both an art and uh, science. If you if you put all your trust and confidence sa technology, then you will fail. You will fail. Yung mga cybersecurity professionals, isa sa pinaka na nakita ko na kailangan ay yung pagiging artistic. Kailangan marunong kang mag-conceptualize or mag-design ng sarili mong security operation center. Kasi ang, ang SOC naman is not technology-centric. Eh. SOC is a concept-driven uh, initiative, not a technology-driven initiative. You can have your SOC in whatever way you want, as long as you know how to uh, think critically. Man. Huwag kayong mag-ano ng, may, may SOC kami kasi bumili kami ng technology. Eh, kalukuhan niya. Di yan totoo. Yeah. No? Kahit bumili kayo dyan kay Palo Alto ng ano, you need, still need to conceptualize your own <coughs> SOC of, uh, initiative. So yan. Kaya cybersecurity is not just science but also an art. Kung hindi ka artistic, very narrow ang pagkakaintindi mo sa cybersecurity. And in cybersecurity, if you know how to think critically, sky is the limit. You can create your own operation. You can you can create your own environment actually. Yan ang uh, cybersecurity. Kaya yung mga kalaban natin magagaling kasi they do not they do not uh, put barriers sa kanilang mga pag-iisip. Yan. Okay. May question pa ba tayo? Actually, good uh, comments coming from our audience. Very, ano po, very great, uh, good discussion. According to Map Madden, many good content and presentation. Thank you po for that. And uh, Sir Darwin Tejerero mentioned, at least for security po na may rope pa rin tayo kahit automated na. Hindi naman po mawawala. Kasi like what uh, Sir Rico mentioned. Yan ang pagkakaiba ng cybersecurity. No? Kasi sa ibang field, pwede mong i-automate lahat at robot na gumagawa. Cybersecurity, hindi pwedeng hindi nag-iisip yung magpapatakbo ng cybersecurity. So, uh, si Darwin, huwag ka mag-alala. Habang buhay pa tayo nandito. <laughs> Na-mention nga po kanina, analyst-centric pa rin. So, hindi mawawala pa rin ang human touch. Kasi because yung critical thinking, ako, wala sa... Hindi natin mag-iisawawala. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Jan. critical thinker, wala naman doon sa AI and ML. Kung ano yung input mo doon, kaya yung bias, very important doon. Eh. Kung ano, and also bias, the creativity, sir, sir, you cannot. Yes, sir. And also the creativity, creativity sir. I don't think that uh, the human touch, the creative touch, nasa atin pa rin regardless of all the technologies that we have. Yes, so, sir, actually, yes. that's the key word. You have to be creative. And think outside the box because the enemies are all distinct. No, 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 don't think box. outside the box. Destroy the box. Okay, that's the destroy all the barriers. What am I? Because sky's the limit. Destroy it. Like how we destroy your enemies. So with that, sir, I think uh, we all, uh it's 558. Now, any last words for uh coming from Sir Nico? especially in the advent of cybersecurity and how you see it in the context of yeah, the... Basahin mo na natin itong comment ng classmate ko. Same, sir. Classmate ko sa Lasal ngayon. Mr. Carlos Sabet. Sabi niya, mga idol, just add it up lang. Kalimitan, kaya nga threat actors magagaling kasi mga butong sila at mataas ang kanilang motivation. Yes. Kaya, Carlo, dapat hindi na tayo kumain. Kaya lagi tayong gutom. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Sige, game. Meron bang virtual referee available si Palo Alto to play with on the news? I think uh, if you want to search further, no, Sir Nico, you have your website naman uh, for Palo. And also we have here. Okay, we have uh, kung meron daw kayong tools that they can play with for training purposes. And actually, Palo Alto is one of our training partners in Pixbo. So if uh, actually you can link 
uh, with us po, and then we will do the the program, the potential programs in, uh, in partnership with Palo Alto. So, ka, kapatid natin sa industry and cybersecurity, especially with the training of Palo Alto. So, we can connect you with that. So, for that series, yes, it's already 6 p.m. and Kaso iba kasi yung pangalan niya, hindi ko, hindi ko ma, ano. Pero, yes, sir. Ito yung tomorrow, sabi niya. Absent uh, mo na. Ito mo na ako bukas. <laughs> Student of life tayo, so, sir. Salamatan natin si Palo Alto at si Mr. Thank John. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank salamat sa pag-share sa iyong yes. uh, alaman. Uh, as usual, we are uh, very uh, fortunate no? to have Palo Alto as our our technology partner. And uh, uh, maraming salamat din kay Jan na uh, sa ngayon, uh, sa oras niya na binigay sa atin na malawak yung kanyang uh, pag-explain. Uh, no? Pag-explain uh, niya sa Uh, pag-explain niya sa atin. At uh, sa ating mga audience, sa usual, uh, it's Friday. Umuulan dito sa amin. Ewan ko kung umuulan dyan sa inyo. Ano, uh, sir? Ma malaro ang panahon. Umuulan, umaaraw, makulimlim. So, for now, maulan. Oo. Uh, so, medyo mag-iingat tayo sa pagmamaneho, paglalakad, medyo madulas. At uh, kung may baha, magpatila mo na tayo. So, huwag mo na kayong uh, sumulong. Okay, uh, meron pa ba tayong mga reminders, uh, Arlene? Uh, so for po, stay tuned lang po tayo sa ating page, sa Facebook page po ng Facebook for more information and for more details po sa ating upcoming activities. And there are many, marami po. Okay, so marami salamat sa inyong lahat na sumubaybay no, sa ating kwentuhang cybersecurity. Uh, medyo matagal-tagal din ako hindi naka-join dito, buti ngayon. Nag-school uh, bukol din ako ngayon. <laughs> Nag-join ako dito. Okay, so weekend na naman. At marami na naman tayong natatanggap ng mga uh, Facebook messages and uh, Viber messages na nagbabati sa atin ng Happy Weekend daw. Happy Weekend daw. Pero kung nasa cyber security ka, No. Happy lang. Happy lang. Walang, Walang weekend. weekend. Thank, Thank you, Sir Nico. Thank you, Pablo. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Pa Pa John Nicolo Mojica. Maraming Thank salamat, bro. Thank you, Mr. Chase, Sir Nico. Busy Oka and Busy Carms. Thank you. Thank you Good day, everyone. everyone.